What do you say tonight we take this car, rip the tune out of it, and start from scratch? That's what we're going to be doing tonight, guys. I'm going to show you exactly how to tune one of these cars from scratch. Now, this is mainly going to be a startup tune. Um, as far as wide open throttle, that stuff's pretty easy. We're not going to get into that tonight, though. What we're going to do is show you guys how to take your Fox body, add your mods in, stuff like that, and let's go ahead and get this thing running. Let's get started. So I'll probably have to zoom in a little bit for you guys. Let's go ahead and start from scratch. So we're gonna create a new project. We'll just call it My Car. So this is how you'll get started. Once you get everything loaded up, you wanna just name it. Project name, we'll just leave it as My Car. And you want to detect. So what it's doing right now is it's detecting the firmware. So it's scanning. And as soon as it's done with that, here we go. Just click accept. So right here, you wanna make sure that you're on wideband, default, everything else can stay the same. Okay, just click next. Just use your default gauges. And this will be our project, guys. So as you can see, the controller's already connected to the car. Now, there are a couple things we need to do right off the bat. So first off, we have to get the car started. So what we're gonna do here is go to basic load settings over here in the corner go to engine and sequential settings click required fuel right here okay so what this is going to ask you is your engine displacement number of cylinders injector flow all of that so what you want to do if you have a stroker type in 331 347 whatever the case may be and then injector flow that's going to be the size of injectors you have i have 24s and your air fuel ratio it should already be at 14.7 just leave it at that and what it's going to do is go ahead and add these numbers up for you in this so make sure that these numbers are added correctly if not uh, do the calculations it gives you a hint right here so injector size per hour which would be 24 in my case multiply that times 10.5 and that'll give you this i'll give you these numbers okay so if everything worked out though you won't have to do that all right so let's go ahead click burn remember to always click burn on everything that you do all right next up what we want to do is calibrate tps so i'm going to step down here we can go ahead and get current because what get current is doing is getting the current reading from the tps at rest so we can click that and then what i'm going to do is step in here push all the way down see how the blue bar moves hold it click get current that's it except all right and that's about all we're going to need to get the car running should be anyway now if you have a very very radical setup maybe not but that should get you really close so from ignition settings we want to go to ignition options and wheel decoder all right so right here is where you're going to have to make a change so up here it says fixed advance use table we don't want to do that what we want to do is go to fixed timing you can set it at whatever you want to set it at i'm setting mine at 20 it's just easy that way uh, the computer will control it you just need to make sure that it matches up so don't focus so much on that number because that's not really going to matter just make sure that whatever number you pick whatever number you choose matches up now for this you will leave your connector in so your little advanced connector up by your distributor you're going to leave that connected for this so you're going to start the car up so let's go ahead and do that you have to click burn first so let's go ahead and get the car started up all right guys and that is running off of a base tune leave that connected Make sure that your timing matches that number. I know that my timing already matches, so we're good. If your timing does not match, change this offset until that number matches what's out there on the car. Or you can adjust the distributor if you need to. You can do that. Just make sure these numbers match, and whenever you do that, go back to use table once they match. Click burn. 
All right, guys, and look at that. We already have a running car. Now, something else we're gonna have to do is go in and calibrate AFR table. So right here, click that. And what you're gonna wanna do is go to your EGO sensor. Go down to whatever sensor you have or you can add your custom numbers in. It should be on your instructions. Mine is the Innovate. So we're gonna write the controller. Now, what I'm not going to do is get into all of your EGO stuff. I will show you a little bit. And what EGO is, is that's going to be your corrections that the computer makes, and that's gonna be in closed loop. So go over here to EGO control. You wanna make sure that that is set to single wide band, right there. Now, your PID settings, I don't advise you guys to get into that right now. You should be fine without it. Um, Maybe we'll get into that later. That's a totally different algorithm that the computer uses to kind of make the car run correctly. So we're not gonna get into that right now. So one of the things I do wanna show you guys though is how to control idle. So let's zoom in on this. We are in the VE table right now. Now what I'm gonna do is come in and basically box in this area. This is where your car is idling at. As you can see, it moves around. So what we want to do is try to capture this, right? Watch how the car idles. It idles down and then up, down, up. So as it goes up, it idles down, and as it goes down, it idles up. It's crazy, right? So what we want to do is typically when you add more fuel, the car will idle up. When you take away fuel, it'll idle down. So let's try something here. It's wanting to kind of idle right here in the 48 range. So i tell you what, let's go up here to 50 and let's add a little bit of fuel there. And then up above it, let's add a little bit more fuel. So we'll go 55. You can play with these numbers. Don't be scared to play with these numbers. Just remember kind of where it came from. See how these boxes are lighting up over here? That means it's interpolating off of this next cell, this next block, which is a 1400 idle. That's what I have it set to. So it's reading off of these numbers, but it's mainly staying right here. So let's just, for the hell of it, add some more fuel. See how the car likes that. And then we want to come right below it, take away a little fuel, go above it, add some fuel. And what you can do over here is, let's just go 54, 53, and 55. Now, as you can see, this has started to level out a little bit. See how it's more stable? So let's pay attention to what we've done here. Now you can make more drastic changes. So let's try that. Let's try 58 and then let's just try 50 just to be crazy with it. That actually seemed to stabilize it uh, a little better. What we have to be careful of over here is this is also RPM rated, right? So we're 800, when it moves over here, it's gonna be in a higher RPM. So what we wanna do is we want to tell this, hey, don't come over here, because if you do, we're gonna take fuel away from you. Don't worry about this 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 block over here, because anytime you're cruising, you're gonna be up above that anyway, so it's not even gonna matter. Don't worry about that. Do whatever you have to do in an area of about right here to make your car idle. All right, so that's decent for right now. Let's go over here to ignition settings and do the same thing. So uh, let's play with this and let's go 13 degrees here. We need to be a little higher over here so we'll just go 14 degrees and then let's go 12 degrees here. Let's try to block it in. Let's tone it down a little bit. We'll go to 13.5. See how it likes that. It's staying pretty stable now. It's gonna move around a little bit. It's just the nature of the beast, guys. Uh, same thing over here if you want to. You can uh, lower these right next to it or keep it the same, something like that. That way if it starts to interpolate into this next cell, it's basically pushing it back. So that's not too bad right there. Um, it could be better. We could probably fine tune it a little bit more. Also, you need to find out where your car likes to idle what timing range it likes to idle. Every car is different. One other thing that I do want to recommend for you guys is to come down here and make sure that your valve frequency, so let me show you guys again where that, where that is. 
go to startup idle, go to idle control, and down here is your valve frequency. So you might want to have to play with this um, depending on what yours is set to. This valve frequency is going to be your idle air control frequency. So whatever it, the hertz that it's operating at. So if you get that wrong, it could cause your car to surge or have a hanging idle. I typically use mine somewhere around about 440 to about 330, 340, somewhere in there. And that seems to work pretty good for me. As you can hear, the car still has a little bit of a surge to it. Not that big of a deal though. You can go in, play with your fuel trims, play with you know your ignition timing and stuff like that. Now, you gotta remember, this is a complete like base tune right here. I'm not keeping this tune in the car. This was just to show you guys like some of the settings and kind of how to get started and get your first fire up done. Also, what you're gonna have to do, or I don't guess you have to, but go ahead, unplug your BAP sensor right here. So just unplug that and you can go ahead and unplug your mass air meter uh, for now. You don't have to delete it for right the second. It'll, it'll just pull right through it. But uh, it would be a very smart move to go ahead and upgrade this to you know either some type of cold air kit or the adapter that goes in here or you could go back to the speed density boot that doesn't have any of this in it anyway just take your plug lay it over there somewhere out of the way and guys that's it uh you are now speed density and you can start driving the car now auto tune will help you out a lot and i'll go ahead and just show you where that is so if you get to this point and you're ready to start driving the car which you could be in about 10 minutes really uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do auto-tune. All right, I'm just gonna switch the car on. We're not gonna start it up. Let it come online. So what you're gonna do is, now I don't think you can use this if you have the light version. So if you have the free version, you're probably not gonna be able to use this, but this is where it'll be, right here. And then you're basically just gonna start driving the car. Uh, the first thing though that you're gonna wanna do is go to advanced settings. And you're going to want to change this to either easy or very easy. Might as well go ahead and change it to very easy now. If you have your idle set the way you want to, then this is what I recommend that you do. Go in and change your minimum RPM to about maybe 1,200 or 1,400, something like that, right? And what that'll do is tell AutoTune to stay out of these cells over here. So anything below uh, 1,200 RPM, it's not going to change. So anything above 1200 RPM all the way to 9,000, it's going to make changes. So then all you're gonna do is start auto-tune. Just click it and start driving the car. Now, as you drive the car, you're gonna notice it wants to like buck and like almost cut off sometimes. That's because as you're driving, this thing's making changes, okay? Every once in a while, just go over here, click apply and save the ECU and you should be good. What you wanna do is drive the car around a lot in and out of different uh, power ranges, different load settings, different gears. Just, you know, don't be too abrupt with the throttle. Just kind of chill, just drive, give it some throttle, uh, come back, do it again, uh, change the gears in the car. So like go to fifth gear, kind of press on the throttle, let off, go to fourth gear, do the same thing. What you're trying to do essentially is make sure that the computer sees all of these different cells and that it can make its changes. Now, auto-tune is not perfect. Uh, it's probably not going to tune it the exact way that you want to, but it should get you really close. I've actually not made any changes to the upper end of my fuel. Only thing I've done is let auto-tune go in and do its thing. Now, auto-tune will not tune your timing. You have to do that yourself. So be very mindful of that. Pay attention as you're driving the car. Uh, data log the car. Make sure of what cells you're hitting. For instance, as you stab the throttle, it's going to kind of come up like this and then run across. Most everybody's car is going to do that. Now, if you have boost, you're gonna to have to add to these cells, uh, go up above 100. NA cars, all you need to go to is 100 right here. You're probably not even gonna hit that 100 mark. You probably stay right here in about the 90 to 98 mark, somewhere in there. Data logging. So if you want to data log your car, all you have to do is click right there. Start logging. Once you do that, you can drive the car down the road. And uh, when you're done, click stop. Then you can go over to Mega Log Viewer. You'll have to download that. And then you'll come up here to open. You'll pick your data log. And there you go. So what that's gonna do is show you everything that's happening in real time as you were driving the car. 
So you're just going to have to put two and two together and figure this out. But as you can see right here, that was a very, very rough idle. Like this thing was sitting here just bouncing all over the place whenever I first started all this. But um, it'll show you everything that you need to know, guys. So that's the Mega Log Viewer. The biggest thing is don't be scared of tuning your car, right? Can you mess it up? Absolutely. And I hope that you have enough sense to not be dabbling in things that you don't know about, right? You're going to have to be in your VE tables. You're going to have to change your timing. And you're going to have to go into like some of your EGO settings. You're going to have to go in and change your fueling. So your injectors, probably the engine size. You're going to have to do stuff like that, right? Change it to wideband. Make sure it's reading the wideband correctly. What I'm saying is don't get into a bunch of these settings if you don't know what you're doing. There's only about maybe eight settings that you really probably need to be in. I just covered most of it with you right there. Uh, get online. There's a bunch of cool classes that you can watch online and uh, it'll help you out a lot the biggest thing that you need to know uh, in the beginning that they don't really tell you is leave the uh, connector plugged in whenever you check your timing and also on the idle air control when you first get this thing set up just go in save the tune as soon as you get it running save it to your desktop save a couple different files of it keep it put up that way if you go in and you change something and for some reason you can't get back to it you're good to go um, I will tell you this, guys, you, you click the wrong setting on that idle air control, and this thing will, will go through the roof as far as RPM. It went to like 2,000 RPM just sitting there holding steady. I had to go in and change the setting real quick like it freaked me out. But uh, yeah, so that was scary. But other than that, not a lot you can really mess up. Stay out of the timing, though, up top if you don't know what you're doing. Leave that alone. Don't mess with that. You can mess with the timing down at idle about all you want. You're not really going to mess anything up there but don't go up there to those upper settings. Just to remind you guys, let, let's make sure that we understand this. Some of you guys already know how to do this, but I'm saying if you're new to the game, stay away from this area up here that I just highlighted. As you can see from about 3,000 to about 6,500, that's gonna be what'll get you if you're not careful. Yes, mine is at 37. I do not recommend uh, you run 37 degrees of timing unless you know what you're doing. All right, guys, I think that is going to wrap this up. Guys, get out there, tune, learn. This is not uh, the be all end all tuning session, obviously. This is just some of the stuff that I didn't know about whenever I first started out and I had to learn on my own. So here's your first fire up. I hope it helps you guys out. And from here, just do your research, figure out what you need to do. I got faith in all of you guys. If my dumb ass can do it, I know you can too. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. And as always, thanks for watching.